what score you really need to buy a house, how to use other people's money to buy yourself a house, and how to get prepared and ready to buy your first house. I'm Joe Chavarria, and this is another episode of Cup of Joe. So today, the topic at hand, what I want to really dive into is how you can buy a house with bad credit and no money down. And before I dive into the content further, I want to remind everybody to like, share, and subscribe to this information, to this video, to my channel here. And comment below, yes, if you're a first-time home buyer, or no, if you're not. So I just kind of know, you know, who this this content is resonating with, so I can continue to to tailor my content to fit what my audience really cares about. So if you're a first-time home buyer, or if you're in the process of buying your first house and you're starting to get it ready, comment yes below. If you bought a house before and you just wanted to brush up on the information, comment no below. Or even if you're not in the market to buy a house, comment no below, so I just know if this is something that 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 you deeply care about. So let's talk about scores. So you know how to buy a house with bad credit. Let's start there. So you don't have to have perfect credit. Now, I know many of you may not fully believe that anyway, but there is a small subset of the market that does believe you need to have perfect credit to buy a house. And by perfect credit, meaning you know 700 credit scores or better and no negative information, period. Um, or even having a foreclosure in the past. Some people believe having a foreclosure in the past, their chances of buying another house are done or even bankruptcy. They're never going to have a chance. I'm here to tell you there is hope for you. There is second and even third chances for 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 you guys. And so if you if you are a first time home buyer and your concern is around your credit, let me just kind of kind of dive in on that a little bit more. So you kind of have a little bit more peace of mind, a little bit more confidence to to not give up on your piece of the American dream and to really set some goals for yourself and set out to accomplish this. So let's start off with scores. So first and foremost, most mortgage lenders want to see at least a 580 to do anything. And by 580, I mean FICO mortgage. So if you are looking at your credit scores online, if it's if it's a Vantage credit score, um, which most credit scores online like Credit Karma will provide you with a Vantage 3.0 score, those aren't the scores that the banks and the mortgage companies are gonna actually be looking at. They're gonna be looking at your FICO mortgage credit scores. So to find out what your FICO mortgage credit scores are, you want to go to myfico.com. I'll put the link in the subscription the uh, description below. Now, this is we're not an affiliate of myfico. We, they don't, you know, pay us anything to say that. It's just a great website to go and get your FICO mortgage scores. They do have a fee to get your your FICO credit scores, but just it's good to know where you stand FICO mortgage wise before you just submit an application to the bank or to a loan officer. Let them letting them run credit, knowing that your score is not there, not strong enough just yet to be able to qualify. Again, you don't even have perfect credit. 580 is still considered bad credit. It's not considered okay. It's not considered considered good. It's considered bad. So. With the 580 score, um, some lenders that offer VA loan products. Um, so if you're a veteran, if you serve this country, first and foremost, we appreciate your services. And if you serve this country and you haven't used your VA benefits, one of your benefits would, would help you with financing your house, where that means you get nothing down. It's it's basically 100% financing if you uh, serve this country and you haven't you haven't used your, your VA benefits. So that's one way to get uh, and you don't need to have perfect credit for that. Typically, lenders that do the VA loan product, they want to see at least about a 580 credit score to have a discussion to begin the process. Um, but if you're going FHA, if you get an FHA loan, typically lenders that do FHA, they want to see somewhere around 600, some 620, some right around 640, and which is still considered bad credit by FICO standards. And you can actually get approved that, or you can at least get the pre-approval process started. Now, the lower your credit score, I want to throw that out there, the lower your credit score is, the maybe the higher the, the interest rate may be, but not tremendously, but it will be higher, which does make a difference over a 30-year loan, um, or the lower the debt to, income rate, uh, debt to income ratio requirements may be. So even though you may have a lower score, there may be some other areas that will 
be a little bit harder to to pass through um, just because they're allowing you to come in at a lower score, but to kind of prevent, you know, something, you know, really bad happening with a loan, like a foreclosure or what have you, they may have like a lower debt to income ratio requirement. Maybe they, instead of seeing like 55% debt to income, maybe they want to see about 43% debt to income ratio that's typically pretty common you know if you're trying to get approved for a mortgage loan that that requires a lower or that can that can start off with a lower credit score something else is going to give they're going to probably want to see a higher higher debt a lower debt to income ratio um or the interest rate may be a little bit higher but again you don't need to have perfect credit and by the way guys my disclaimer that i forgot to mention earlier in this video um, i am not a licensed loan officer i'm not a financial planner i'm not an attorney so none of this is mortgage advice i'm not giving any any pre-quoted interest rates i'm not giving any financial advice any legal advice you definitely want to seek the expertise of an attorney of a mortgage lender or financial planner if you have any questions around that but i'm speaking from pure experience and knowledge and what i've witnessed from the mortgage industry and typically what they look for to to approve people so that's how, from a, from a score perspective, again, you don't need to have perfect credit to qualify as long as you have right around a 580. Some can do 520. I've seen some lenders go as low as 520. But standard, what I'm seeing very commonly is right around 580 to 640. You can get a start the process of a, an FHA loan or a VA loan if you're a veteran. And uh, and so that's typically the score that, that's necessary. Now, Second point I want to discuss would be how to use other people's money, okay? So where, let's say, down payment is an issue. So let's say credit score is not so much of an issue. Let's say the financial aspect of it all, the down payment is an issue. Kind of going back to my first point around you don't need to have perfect credit. You don't need to have a lot of money down either. Some people believe you have to have 20% for a down payment in order to qualify and that's not necessarily true you don't need to have that much money of course it's not there's nothing wrong with that if you have been saving um, of course it's not a bad idea to put a bigger down payment if it will help you lower your rate get a better loan have a lower payment totally good that's that's definitely a good thing but if you don't have 20 percent down or even 10 percent down don't get discouraged there is hope for you and there's options for you so there are government backed programs whether it be in your state or in your county that that offer incentives for for buyers who have uh, below median income so for example i'm in harris county and last time i checked the median income in harris county was right around seventy-seven thousand a year so if you fell below that i think it's about five percent below that you'd qualify for some type of grant that the city was offering i don't remember all the specifics and this is why you want to speak to a licensed loan officer about this but it, the generality of the program was the grant would be given to the individual that's buying the house it would be really uh, applied towards the the closing costs or down payment that would be required so let's say that you're getting an fha loan and let's say that the lender is requiring three and a half percent down for the down payment there are grants out there that can cover three percent of that 3.5 um, or even four percent of that 3.5 so there's even a possibility that you could even get money back at closing but let's assume that you qualified for um three percent um grant right and so that leaves 0.5 left open that's uncovered but you just let's say your down payment was going to be 10 grand for the house that you're buying and you had to that was your down payment right but then the the, the grant that's being applied towards the loan from the from the county let's say that covers about eight and a half right so now you only need to come to the table with 1500 not bad right a lot better than 10 grand and there's some ways to even get that 1500 cover, right? Talk to the loan officer to see if there's anything they can do about closing costs. Talk to your realtor to see if the realtor can help negotiate for some seller concessions, right? Let's say that it is a buyer's market. Let's say properties are sitting on the market a lot longer and sellers are, are getting more motivated to sell the property. 
you may have a seller that's willing to cover some closing costs or you know help out with anything in regards to the the transaction closing and that can help cover the remaining balance or you know anything left over that the that the grant did not cover so there's ways to get into a house with little to nothing down again speak to a licensed loan officer about what programs are available in your county and in your state and see what you're eligible for and talk with your realtor to find out hey what seller concessions exist what's the track record with that realtor and i mean realtors i love them they're they're but they're 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 so there's so many of them right so how do you decide if you're getting a good realtor well ask for your your realtor's resume ask for their history find out if they you know what's their track record experience with getting seller concessions right you know how many times were they able to negotiate to get the seller to help cover some closing costs or to help do with some repairs or whatever like you want to find out how good of a negotiator your realtor is right so find that information out and have everybody go to work for you you're the consumer here and they should be really working for you right because once you buy a house you put a lot of people to work you put that loan officer to work because they, they earn a commission when the deal closes you put the bank to work that's providing all the funds and earning money on the interest and all the people that the bank employs you're putting the realtor to work and the realtor's family to work you're putting contractors to work a lot of forces go to work behind the scenes once you buy a house and there's a lot of value there so make sure that you're getting the help that you need make sure your loan officer is bending over backwards and finding out every single program that's out there to really help you and make sure your realtor is also going to bat for you as well trying to get as many seller concessions as, poss as possible to help you cover down payment now we'll throw this out there when it comes to these programs these grants that are out there a lot of them you don't pay back a lot of them are forgivable but it, it does tend to make the interest rate be a little bit higher so let's say hypothetically if you did not get the the, the grant let's say your interest rate was four percent and then let's say with the grant apply your interest rate is now four point to five percent okay so don't don't worry about it going from four percent to seven percent or ten percent it's not going to be that extreme um of course again always talk with the loan officer but um, it's very i've never seen that happen it's usually like a quarter per, uh, percentage higher maybe even a, even smaller than that higher but do count on the interest rate being um, a little bit higher if you're using outside funds or if you're using a grant or grant money to help buy down or help pay for your down payment and last but not least what i want to talk about is how to get prepared okay so i like to tell everybody that's getting ready to buy a house knowing that these programs exist is pretend like they don't okay so pretend like you have to have the best credit pretend like you have to have a lot of money down act as if and shoot in that direction and so therefore if you're shooting to have the highest score possible let's say your credit needs a little bit of work make sure all your credit cards are paid down make sure that if you have any lingering collection accounts that are out there that you settle to get them removed or you try to dispute them to have them removed make sure you don't have a ton of inquiries the last six months so do some things to kind of clean up your credit to ensure you have the highest score possible before you apply for a loan little side note there if you have some open credit cards and you have some balances Make sure you get your credit cards paid down between 1% and 7% of what the total credit limit is. I don't recommend paying them completely off. And the reason why I don't is because when it comes to your utilization component of your FICO score, which accounts for roughly 30% of your score, the perfect utilization by FICO standards is a 1% to 7% utilization rate so what that means let's say you have a thousand dollar credit card as opposed to paying it completely off if you can get the balance between one uh, ten dollars and seventy dollars right in that range that is the best utilization to have and therefore by having the best utilization that's going to help you have the highest score possible at the time that you're applying for a mortgage loan so i'd say about a month before you actually apply for your mortgage loan do every for one check out your scores via my fico verify your fico mortgage score so you kind of know before you're going into it what your fico mortgage scores are and two do everything you can possible to get those balances in that range about a month i say a month before you really apply 
because it takes it could take anywhere between a couple weeks, maybe up to a full month, depending on when that credit card company or credit card companies send the information to the credit reporting agencies and it reflects on your on your credit report. So I'd, I'd, I would wait about a good you know three to four weeks before you actually apply after you pay those accounts down. So when you do apply, you have the highest score possible at that moment. And if you have the highest score possible at that moment, that could make a difference in your interest rate, which could save you a lot of money per month and a lot of money over the lifetime of your loan. Another thing you want to do as relates to down payment is pretend like you're not going to get a grant. Pretend like you're not going to get some kind of assistance or seller concessions. This way, it kind of forces you to start saving some money. This is going to be a good um, habit that you'll begin to form because when you're going from renting or even staying with folks and then all of a sudden you got a mortgage payment, this is serious responsibility. You want to make sure that you have savings set aside for a rainy day. You're able to afford the mortgage payment. So look at your budget. Look at what your, what your, what your expenditures are and find ways to start cutting some costs down. Start saving some money um, as if you're going to have to put a down payment. And if for whatever, let's say you do qualify for some kind of grant or outside assistance and you don't have to put any money down it's nice to have that option that if you wanted to put the down payment you could or if you did and you want to just kind of keep that money in savings and just let it continue to grow maybe buy some furniture for the house instead of financing it maybe have some money set aside for any day maybe have about two or three mortgage payments set aside in savings in the event of a job change or a job loss that your your mortgage is still going to be paid on time you know that's that's Definitely a good thing. A lot of people want to rush into the house because it's immediate gratification. Some people want to impress their friends and, you know, they see people on Facebook buying houses left and right. And I want to be that person. I want to be just like that. Hey, do it on your own time. Don't rush it. This is a big investment for you and your family. Take your time with this and really plan accordingly. Work on your credit. Get your scores up as high as possible. Save some money. Pretend like you're not going to get any kind of help or any kind of assistance. And then when the time is ready, reach out to a licensed loan officer in your area. Ask him about these programs. Reach out to a licensed realtor in your area. Find out about their history with seller concessions and what they can do with that and how aggressive they are and how much at, you know, how much are they willing to help you with the sales price and so on and so forth. And, and pick the best one and, and let them go to work for you. Now, if you need any help with your credit, um, I will put a link in the description below. Um, we are taking on new clients. My, my, my team and I are happy to thoroughly review your credit report with you, inspect it for any inaccurate information, anything that doesn't belong there, something that's hurting your credit score, and give you a good game plan, a good solid game plan that in the next two to four months that it can really you know help boost your credit scores or really make a difference to your credit report, which would help you um, in turn get, get a better interest rate or get approved in general general for for a mortgage or for your for your home loan down the road so if you want more information on that i'll put a link in the description below so thanks for watching this video again be sure to like share and subscribe this content comment yes below if you're a first time home buyer no if you have no plans of buying a house just so i know and thanks for tuning in i'm joe chavaria i'll see you on the next video